are tuned in to The Go Show, the official podcast of Andy Go, owner and founder of Gojo Studios in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm your host, Andy Go. You could be listening to any other podcast in the world, but you're right here with me, and I appreciate that. This is The Go Show, the official podcast of me, Andy Go, and Gojo Studios. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is not the podcast that I was planning to release today. I had uh, some other content that I will uh, get out there soon, but with everything that's going on between the killing of George Floyd, uh, Amy Cooper in New York City, and the Republican National Convention uh, still slated to come here to Charlotte in just under 90 days, I have to get a few things off my chest. So three things, really. I, I've got some thoughts on the killing of George Floyd and the Amy Coopers of the world uh, in just a moment. I'm also going to renew my call to cancel the RNC here in Charlotte. And then uh, third, I've got just a personal message at the end. So let's just get into it. Um, my thoughts on George Floyd and Amy Cooper and all that. It's tiring. It's atrociously tiring to think that we're just in the middle of the same cycle that has just been played out over and over and over um, for year after year after year, uh, certainly in my lifetime. And it's just, it, it's obviously been happening probably even to an even worse degree all throughout the history of this country. And it's tough to think that we go through the same motions every time we go through the same outrage online. Every time we, we have the hashtags, we have the t-shirts, we, we, you know, we, we stand in solidarity. We have the actions, we have the movements, we, protest and we riot um, to get the point across and we never seem to move forward even an inch from where we were. You know, it seems like we haven't moved an inch from where we were when Trayvon Martin was shot, from when Keith Lamont Scott and Jonathan Farrell right here in Charlotte, North Carolina were shot. Amadou Diallo, Tamir Rice, Walter Scott. Uh, we, we, we saw Philando Castile bleed out in his own car in front of his family. Uh, and, and seeing that has not stopped anything. Alton Sterling, Terrence Crusher. I mean, Sandra Bland, the, the, Michael Brown, the list literally goes on and on and on. And it is all, and that's just within the last 10 years. And it doesn't seem to change at any point. The cycle is the same. The process is the same. And I just don't know what is going to change that uh, cycle from, from continuing to perpetuate. You know, there's an old, there's that saying out there that it's just one bad apple or just one rotten apple, which uh, may be true in some circumstances, but you also have to account for the rest of the metaphor there, which is that one bad or rotten apple will spoil the entire bunch. And of course, I'd like to think that the majority of police officers out there are good people doing their work for the right reasons. And if that's the case, then it also falls upon them to start stepping up and making sure that they are policing their own profession, that they are eliminating this violent strain of rogue cops from their ranks. And until that happens, until those police chiefs and those leaders in the police ranks, which I really know nothing about myself internally, until they step up and do that, then we're still going to see this. Until they are brought to justice, these offending cops, and they are ostracized from the ranks, their peers within the police departments, we're still going to see this. There's certainly a ton of factors that go into why police brutality exists and more than just this one. But in my eyes, that's an underrated one that really needs to have more attention shown on it. The next thing I want to talk about is the upcoming Republican National Convention coming here to Charlotte in just under 90 days. Now, back in 2018, I wrote an op-ed in what was then Creative Loafing Charlotte, which of course no longer exists in its same form today. 
um, but essentially arguing against hosting the RNC. This was before the vote actually went down from city council to host it. Uh, but I argued that we should not host it because of the risk to our citizens' safety, uh, specifically inviting in people who could be dangerous and create the circumstances for violence within our city. And of course, not even two years prior to this, we experienced the Charlotte uprising. Of course, the response to Keith Lamont Scott's murder here in Charlotte, which uh, when I think about that time, I, I, I worry that we haven't learned anything from that time. And, and, and that was part of my reasoning going into that 2018 op-ed. You know, and now we fast forward to two years later, and not only is that exact danger still there, but it has also been amplified uh, quite a bit. I mean, right now we're seeing in Minneapolis uh, what could potentially play out here just 90 days from now. I mean, we are getting a very clear preview of exactly the type of circumstances that can lead to these situations. And make no mistake, inviting the RNC here, especially with the amount of people that the president wants to bring here, is is inviting these exact circumstances to our doorstep. And to me, that is crossing a threshold to where you are almost assuredly putting your people at risk. And make no mistake, that is the crux of my argument as to why we do not need to host the RNC here, is that we are risking the safety and health of our citizens in doing this. And it's not just the potential for violence, of course, that now we have to deal with that we didn't have to consider back in 2018. It's uh, this global pandemic. It's COVID-19. It is literally everything that this conference this event represents is the antithesis to everything we've heard about what we need to do to keep our communities and ourselves safe during this pandemic. And until we have a vaccine, there is absolutely no way an event like this can happen in the original form. And if our city leaders acquiesce to these demands that the RNC and the president will have, it will speak volumes to me about how much the safety and the well-being of the citizens of Charlotte Mecklenburg are valued in the eyes of city leaders. So there is probably several more podcast topics I could do on this idea alone, but I am going to leave it as a renewed call to cancel the RNC no matter what the costs are. And I will say that those costs aren't mine necessarily to bear. That will probably not result in a whole lot of money out of my pocket, but I don't know what dollar amount justifies even one death of one of our citizens in the name of holding this event. And if you do, please uh, email me, Andy at gojo.com, and we'll have a we'll have a discussion about that. Last thing I want to talk about here today is just um it's it's easy to be thinking about what role you and myself and 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 all of us can play in dismantling this violent, oppressive system that we exist in. And uh, I'm always reminded of a quote that a good friend of mine uh, gave me when, when, when doing this type of work. Now, some people attribute this quote to an Australian artist who's 80 years old named Leela Watson. Uh, some people attribute it to Aboriginal Australian activists. Uh, I'm not really sure, but either way, this quote has always rung very true for me. And the quote is, if you've come here to help me, you're wasting your time. But if you've come here because your liberation is bound up with mine, then let us work together. Now, I'm going to say that again. If you have come here to help me, you are wasting your time. But if you've come here because your liberation is bound up with mine, then let us work together. Clearly, there's a lot at stake, of course, for our minority population. Uh, people who have been traditionally oppressed, people who continue to be oppressed. But the truth is, it's really all of our liberation that's at stake. 
And if you're a white person, if you are a person of privilege, if you are somebody who truly cares about the situation that you see your your friends and your peers in when when these types of things happen, then I encourage you not to lend a helping hand. We're not here to help. We're not here to offer sympathy. We're not here to um, help pull somebody up from the ground. Instead, realize that our liberations are both bound together. They're inextricably linked. And if any of the people in our community, if their freedoms and rights are threatened, then all of our freedoms and rights are threatened. If you're someone who benefits from privilege and you want to know how you can help reverse this cycle or break the wheel, then you can use your privilege as a way to speak out and carry weight against these types of incidents. The more that people can speak out against it, especially people who do benefit from privilege, who are not directly affected by this type of violence, the more that we can say that this is not what we accept as a society and this is not what we accept as a culture, the closer we're going to be to eliminating this stuff from our lives. If you're out there wondering what you can do, that's exactly what you can do. Speak up. Say that this is not acceptable. Call it out in real life. Make sure that this is not a part of your daily life as much as you can. It's small steps like that that will eventually turn into a greater effect that's felt across our society. All right, guys, thanks so much for uh, tuning into this podcast and listening to uh, my thoughts on this uh, real sensitive subject. But um, last thing I'm going to throw out there before we go is that if you find yourself out protesting this weekend and you end up needing a lawyer, I will recommend to you Darlene Harris, who is actually my lawyer, uh, but she uh, not only does business stuff like she does for me, but she does criminal work too. She actually defended Raekwon Borum in 2017. Raekwon uh, was, of course, accused of killing Justin Carr during the aforementioned uh, Charlotte Uprising riots in 2016. Uh, but if you need help, she's the one to call. She's offering pro bono service, uh, reduced rates for felonies, things like that. Check her out on Twitter at Darlene ESQQC. That's Darlene ESQQC on Twitter. She's on Instagram too, at Attorney Darlene Harris. That's at Attorney Darlene Harris on Instagram. And finally, her website is Darlene Harris ESQ.com. That's Darlene Harris ESQ.com. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for listening. Be safe out there. My name's Andy saying drive home safe, be great every day, and tell your loved ones that you love them. I'm out.